What if one of history's greatest mysteries was actually one of its biggest misconceptions? For over a millennium, the Picts of ancient Scotland have been described as a people who simply vanished, conquered, displaced, or absorbed so completely that they left barely a trace in the historical record. Yet revolutionary DNA analysis has revealed a startling truth. The Picts never disappeared at all. Instead, their genetic legacy flows through the veins of modern Scots, comprising up to 60% of the ancestry in northeastern Scotland. This groundbreaking discovery is overturning centuries of historical assumptions and revealing how an entire civilization can be erased from cultural memory, while their biological heritage endures, hidden within the DNA of their descendants for over a thousand years. The genetic landscape of Scotland presents one of the most fascinating puzzles in European population history, where ancient tribal identities, cultural transformations, and biological continuity intersect in complex ways. At the heart of this enigma lies what scholars have termed the Celtic problem, the challenge of understanding how distinct Celtic peoples, particularly the enigmatic Picts, contributed to the formation of modern Scottish identity through both genetic inheritance and cultural transmission. Recent advances in ancient DNA analysis, combined with comprehensive studies of mitochondrial DNA and Y-chromosome haplogroup distributions, have begun to unravel the intricate tapestry of Scottish ancestry, revealing that the supposed disappearance of the Picts represents one of history's most persistent misconceptions. The Pictish people, who dominated much of what is now Scotland from the late Iron Age through the early medieval period, have long captured the imagination of historians and geneticists alike. Ancient DNA studies extracted from Pictish burial sites across Orkney and eastern Scotland have revolutionised our understanding of these mysterious people and their role in Scottish genetic heritage. Genomic analysis of remains from key Pictish strongholds, including sites at Port Mahomac, Rhiney and various Orcadian locations, demonstrates remarkable genetic continuity between Pictish populations and modern Scots, particularly those residing in northeastern Scotland. The mitochondrial DNA haplogroups found in Pictish remains, primarily H, U and T lineages, mirror those prevalent in contemporary Scottish populations, while Y chromosome analysis reveals a predominance of R1b, haplogroups characteristic of Celtic populations throughout the British Isles. When Kenneth MacAlpin established the Kingdom of Alba in the mid-9th century, uniting Pictish and Gaelic territories under a single crown, the political structure that had defined Pictish identity began to dissolve. However, genetic evidence suggests that this political transformation did not involve significant population displacement or genetic bottlenecking. Instead, the Pictish nobility and common people alike appear to have been integrated into the new Gaelic-dominated political order, adopting Gaelic language, customs and identity markers, while retaining their ancestral territories and, crucially, their genetic heritage. This process of cultural assimilation while maintaining biological continuity helps explain the distinctive regional genetic patterns observed in modern Scotland. Northeastern Scottish populations, particularly those in areas corresponding to historical Pictish strongholds like Aberdeenshire, Angus and the Moray Firth region, display genetic signatures that differ subtly but measurably from populations in western Scotland and the Highlands. These differences, while not dramatic enough to suggest separate ancestral populations, indicate the persistence of local genetic characteristics that can be traced back through centuries of cultural change. The MT DNA analysis of contemporary northeastern Scots reveals elevated frequencies of certain haplogroup H subclades and distinctive distributions of haplogroup U lineages that correlate with patterns observed in ancient Pictish DNA, providing compelling evidence for genetic continuity across more than a millennium of cultural transformation. The relationship between Pictish genetics and broader Celtic identity illuminates the complex nature of ethnogenesis in early medieval Europe. Linguistic evidence strongly suggests that the Picts spoke a Celtic language, most likely belonging to the P-Celtic or Britonic branch that also gave rise to Welsh and Cornish. This linguistic affiliation places them firmly within the Celtic cultural sphere, a connection reinforced by genetic analysis showing close affinities between Pictish DNA and that of other Celtic populations throughout the British Isles and continental Europe. Y chromosome studies reveal that Pictish males predominantly carried R1b, L21, and related haplogroups characteristic of Celtic populations, while their mitochondrial DNA profiles show the typical European Neolithic and Bronze Age lineages found throughout Celtic regions. 
These genetic markers indicate that the Picts were not foreign invaders or an isolated population, but rather part of the broader Celtic demographic expansion that characterised much of Iron Age and early medieval Europe. However, within this broader Celtic context, the Picts maintained distinctive cultural expressions that set them apart from their neighbours and contributed unique elements to Scottish heritage. Their remarkable stone carving tradition, exemplified by the enigmatic symbol stones found throughout northern and eastern Scotland, represents one of the most distinctive artistic achievements of early medieval Europe. These monuments, adorned with mysterious symbols whose meanings remain partially obscured, demonstrate both participation in wider Celtic artistic traditions and the development of uniquely Pictish iconographic systems. Genetic analysis of populations in areas with high concentrations of Pictish stones reveals subtle but consistent genetic markers that suggest these artistic traditions were maintained by stable local communities rather than itinerant craftsmen, indicating that cultural distinctiveness and genetic continuity reinforced each other across generations. The integration of Pictish populations into broader Scottish society involved complex processes of admixture that varied significantly across different regions and time periods. In the Northern Islands, particularly Orkney and Shetland, Pictish genetic signatures became overlaid with substantial Norse influence following the Viking expansion of the 8th and 9th centuries. Why chromosome analysis from these regions reveals elevated frequencies of Scandinavian haplogroups. Particularly R1, a lineages characteristic of Norwegian populations, indicating significant male-mediated gene flow during the Norse period. However, the mitochondrial DNA profiles of these same populations retain substantial traces of pre-Norse ancestry, suggesting that Viking settlement involved primarily male migrants, who intermarried with local Pictish women, creating hybrid populations that preserved important elements of indigenous genetic heritage, while incorporating new cultural and genetic influences. In contrast, the mainland regions of Pictish Scotland experienced different patterns of genetic change, following political unification with Gaelic territories. Here, the genetic evidence suggests more gradual integration processes. The role of warfare and conflict in shaping Pictish genetic legacy presents another crucial dimension of their contribution to Scottish ancestry. Historical sources describe numerous conflicts between Pictish kingdoms and their neighbours, including battles with Roman forces, early Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, and later Gaelic polities. However, genetic evidence suggests that these conflicts while politically significant, did not result in the kind of demographic catastrophes that might have eliminated Pictish genetic contributions to Scottish ancestry. Instead, the genetic data indicates that military conflicts were followed by periods of recovery and integration that allowed Pictish populations to maintain their territorial holdings and demographic presence even as political structures evolved. The persistence of Pictish place names throughout northeastern Scotland many preserving linguistic elements that can be traced to pre-Gaelic languages, provides additional evidence for population continuity despite political upheavals. The question of Pictish social organisation and its influence on Scottish genetic patterns reveals another layer of complexity in understanding their legacy. Some historical sources suggest that Pictish society may have practised matrilineal inheritance, at least among elite families, which would have created distinctive patterns of genetic and cultural transmission. While definitive proof of widespread matrilineal remains elusive, certain burial sites show clustering of related mitochondrial DNA lineages that could indicate the presence of matrilineally organised kin groups, while the distribution of high-status grave goods sometimes correlates with specific mitochondrial DNA haplogroups in ways that might reflect maternal inheritance of status. If such systems did exist among the Picts, they would have created unique mechanisms for preserving and transmitting both genetic and cultural heritage that differed from the patrilineal systems characteristic of most contemporary European societies. The broader implications of Pictish genetic legacy extend beyond Scotland to illuminate patterns of Celtic identity and continuity throughout the British Isles and beyond. Comparative analysis of Pictish DNA with samples from Ireland, Wales, Cornwall and Brittany reveals the complex web of relationships that connected Celtic populations across maritime networks of trade, migration and cultural exchange. The genetic evidence suggests that the Picts were part of a broader Celtic demographic continuum that stretched across much of Atlantic Europe, sharing common ancestral origins while developing distinctive regional characteristics. Within this broader Celtic context, the Picts occupied a unique position that combined maritime connections with continental Europe and overland relationships with other British Celtic populations. 
Y chromosome analysis reveals traces of haplogroups that may reflect continued contact with Scandinavia and northern Germany, while mtDNA studies indicate possible connections with populations in northern France and the Low Countries. The London Lynx excavations, which uncovered a substantial Pictish cemetery dating from the 6th to 8th centuries AD, have yielded particularly valuable genetic evidence due to the exceptional preservation of biological material and the careful stratigraphic recording of burial contexts. Isotope analysis combined with ancient DNA extraction has enabled researchers to track individual life histories with remarkable precision, revealing patterns of mobility and kinship that illuminate the fundamental social dynamics of Pictish communities. The mitochondrial DNA analysis from London Lynx reveals the clearest evidence for female mobility patterns, showing a remarkable diversity of maternal lineages within the cemetery population that contrasts sharply with the more homogeneous Y chromosome profiles of the buried males. The complex genetic interactions between Pictish populations and Norse settlers in the Northern Isles of Scotland represent one of the most fascinating examples of cultural dominance accompanied by demographic continuity in medieval European history. Comprehensive genome sequencing of ancient and medieval individuals from Orkney, conducted as part of the broader Scottish Ancient DNA Project, has revealed the remarkable extent to which local Pictish populations persisted genetically, even as Norse culture came to dominate virtually every aspect of political, economic and social organisation in these strategically crucial archipelagos. These findings fundamentally challenged traditional migration models that emphasised population replacement during the Viking Age, instead revealing patterns of cultural transformation that occurred through intermarriage, adoption, and gradual assimilation rather than demographic substitution. The genetic evidence from Orkney presents a particularly striking case study in the resilience of indigenous populations during periods of apparent cultural conquest. While archaeological evidence clearly demonstrates the overwhelming dominance of Norse material culture, settlement patterns and political structures following Viking colonisation in the 8th and 9th centuries. Ancient DNA analysis reveals that the underlying population retained predominantly Pictish genetic characteristics throughout the Norse period and into the medieval era. The survival of specific Pictish mtDNA lineages through centuries of Norse political dominance indicates that local women maintained sufficient social status and cultural authority to preserve and transmit important elements of indigenous heritage, even within predominantly Norse social frameworks. Genetic analysis of populations from the Hebrides, Caithness and Sutherland reveals comparable patterns of male-mediated Norse gene flow overlaying persistent indigenous genetic substrates, suggesting that the Viking impact on Scottish demographics was far more limited and localised than previously assumed. The enigmatic symbols carved on Pictish stones represent one of the most mysterious legacies of early Scotland, offering rare windows into the world of the Picts. Where the archaeological and genetic record leaves open questions, these remarkable stones stand as silent witnesses to lost rituals and traditions. Scholars have identified dozens of recurring symbols on Pictish stone monuments, broadly categorised into animal motifs, geometric designs, and representations of everyday objects. Among the most prominent are the enigmatic double disc and Z-rod, mirror and comb, crescent with V-rod, and the serpent with Z-rod. The meanings attached to many of these symbols are speculative. The mirror and comb are often associated with wealth or prestige, possibly denoting female memorials or referencing feminine power in Pictish society. The crescent paired with a V-rod is interpreted as a symbol potentially connected to death or cosmic cycles, echoing moon and sun worship. Some scholars propose that the serpent symbols related to healing or magical protection, drawing parallels from comparable iconography found in other ancient cultures. The double disc, often superimposed with a Z-rod, remains cryptic, yet its repeated presence hints at a theme important across generations. The geometric patterns and combinations of motifs may have been employed to denote kinship, rank or territory, possibly serving as identifiers in a society where oral tradition dominated Occasionally, stones display groupings of three symbols, interpreted as commemorating familial relationships or recording significant alliances and treaties. Yet for all of these interpretations, a substantial portion of Pictish stone symbolism remains unresolved, inviting ongoing scholarly debate. The spiritual worldview of the Picts is believed to have been intertwined with the rhythms and powers of nature, reflecting broad affinities with the polytheistic traditions of their Celtic neighbours. 
Prior to Christianization, Pictish religion reportedly venerated multiple gods, likely tied to rivers, hills, animals, and celestial phenomena. Evidence for nature worship is seen in the placement of sacred sites, such as stone circles and monumental burials, in locations that command views of dramatic landscapes, waterways, or astronomical events. Female deities held significant power among the Picts, and women appear to have been prominent in religious life and succession, with some sources suggesting matrilineal inheritance and powerful goddess cults. Rituals and ceremonies probably took place at ancient sites such as the Ness of Brodgar, with seasonal rites marking solstices, lunar phases, and agricultural cycles. As the Picts came under increasing influence from neighbouring Christian kingdoms, their religious landscape transformed. Archaeological evidence suggests the gradual integration of Christian symbols and practices, culminating in hybrid stones that combine Pictish motifs with Christian iconography, such as crosses and biblical scenes. The transition was neither abrupt nor uniform. Vestiges of earlier traditions survive in the decorative schemes and the continued use of animal and geometric motifs even on overtly Christian monuments. Early churches in Pictland maintained ties with monastic orders from Ireland and Northumbria, with saints like Columba and Ninian playing foundational roles in religious conversion. Place names, burial patterns, and monastic foundations echo these spiritual shifts, charting the move from animistic practices toward formalized Christianity across two centuries. Pictish spiritualities likely included shamanistic and magical elements, attuned to both lunar and solar cycles, and practiced by solitary individuals or small groups vested with special knowledge. Anecdotal evidence and later folklore speak of druids and holy people who communed with spirits or undertook ritual mediation for healing, divination, and prosperity. This strand of belief persisted in Scottish witchcraft traditions well into the medieval period, with some claiming lineages that trace back to solitary practitioners of early Pictish nature magic. Symbols on stone, especially those incorporating spirals, crescents, and zoomorphic shapes, were thought to embody magical properties, channeling the transformative powers of nature or warding off malign influences. Certain motifs, such as the Z-rod intersecting an animal or geometric shape, may have signified broken weapons or a warrior's death, thus linking the symbols to intricate funerary rites and beliefs about the afterlife. The recurring Pictish beast, a mysterious form depicted on many stones, provokes ongoing speculation about its cosmic or spiritual significance, with interpretations ranging from sea creatures revered in nature cults to manifestations of ancestral spirits or deities. The locations of Pictish stones often mark boundaries, crossroads, and prominent places in the landscape, reinforcing interpretations that these sites held ceremonial or ritual importance. Some stones are found near ancient burial mounds, stone circles, or springs traditionally believed to possess healing attributes. These contexts strengthen the theory that the stones functioned not merely as markers, but as active agents in spiritual and communal observances. Archaeological studies at places like Port Mahomac have revealed monastic settlements that were once leading centres for carving and ecclesiastical learning. The transition from pagan belief to Christianity saw the refurbishing of older ritual spaces, repurposing sacred sites for new liturgical functions, while preserving much of the original symbolism. The harmonization of pagan and Christian iconography is also visible in grave goods, sculptural programs, and the continued reference to animal and cosmological motifs, themes that did not vanish but rather adapted within the evolving spiritual fabric of Pictland. Ultimately, the carved stones and their secret symbols are the principal legacy by which the spiritual and religious cosmos of the Picts may be glimpsed, if never fully understood. Such was the legacy of the Picts a people whose vanished rituals carved mystery into the very fabric of the Scottish landscape, and whose hidden codes continue to intrigue and challenge the modern search for origins and identity in early Scotland.